Hello everyone, this is Eric, and welcome to my strange and mad ideas. Alright, we're back for episode 2 of this Let's Play. I'm starting off here in the base that I started constructing in the last episode. And straight off the bat, you might notice that I lost some levels. And no, I didn't do any enchanting. I was down in the mines between episodes. I was going to get some more resources going. I was going to try to get some lapis between episodes. And you know, I managed to find some lapis, found some more diamonds too. Got a lot of iron going. But while I was down there, I'm digging out in a branch. And a creeper sneaks up behind me. And he blows me up. And, you know, that just, it was awful. I ran back down there, got all my stuff, and that was fine, but I lost, I had 33 levels at that point, and I lost it. Now I have 7. So hopefully this episode we can try to get back on up to 30 levels, and by the end of the episode we'll enchant something. But... My main goal this episode, though, is to keep on expanding my base deeper into this cave. I have some more places to go around here. So you can see, I could hook this up. There's a dead end down here. Although I think what I'm going to do today is continue this path, past the furnaces, down into this dead end. And down here at the end of this, we're going to put the nether portal. And so later in this episode, we'll be traveling to the nether for the first time, doing some exploring. And so I think we'll just hop right on into this. Alright, so I want to start off by showing y'all how I turn regular Minecraft cave generation like this into something that looks just a little bit nicer. Something more like a home, like this. And you do it in a few steps, so I'll show you a bit by bit. You start off by shaping out the cave, and I had already done a little bit here, and uh, I'll show you a little further down the line. So like this section right here, one, this looks like a creeper blew up or something, it needs to be filled in, and I have some blocks here for it. Something like this, I'm actually going to go ahead and use dirt for, because I want dirt to go in the floor eventually. And so I just fill that in. And later I can change the elevation of the floor how I want it. And then this piece kind of just blocks things. And so I think I'm just going to remove the whole thing. And then what I'm just doing is, you know, the caves are a good start the way they naturally generate. But they leave a lot to be desired. And they kind of generate super tight. So we're going to dig out some of this up here too. And yeah, that's starting to look a little bit better. But I'm going to... Just keep on moving down. Alright, so I finished my first pass through this cave. And as I said before, I was just shaping it out. So as you can see, there's a lot more room to walk through here. And it looks just a little bit nicer. Obviously, the blocks are still a mess. But just the shape of it is so much better. And then if we come down here, I cleared this out quite a bit. And that's going to give me some room for nether portal down here in this corner. So now we're going to start the second pass. We're just going to replace the granite and the diorite with more gray tone blocks. What I'm going to do is put this andesite in my offhand and just dig out the diorite and place the andesite in its place. That'll just help me create these veins of different textures but without having such a contrast in color. So once I've done that I can kind of see where the vein starts and continues down here. And so I just want to make sure it doesn't look like it just stops. Like this piece just stops right here in this wall. We don't want that. So let's bring this down and fill in these pieces. And it'll just look like it's more rooted. And that just kind of creates this vein of andesite that comes around. The other thing I want to add into it is some cobblestone. The cobblestone also helps break up the texture quite a lot. Adds a lot of life to the build. 
That looks a lot better with just a little bit of cobblestone added. So just as you're going, you just kind of decide on the spot. How do I want this to look right now? And then when you put it together, if you like it, leave it. If you don't, tear it down and try again. Alright, I finished filling in all the dirt in the ceiling with stone. And it looks a lot better. Looks a lot more uh, cave-like. I left this dirt in the floor because I want dirt to go in the floor. If we come up here, I replace this patch of granite here with some dirt already. And I'm just going to continue doing that. And this is uh, kind of the next pass is some more finer details. Such as putting dirt in the floor, making a almost a pathway down, a pathway down the cave. But you uh, kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm just making sure it's wide enough. I don't want it to be too uniform either. And I'm doing the standard take a step back and look at it. Make sure it looks good. Since this is down here where my nether portal is going to be. I'm gonna, I just kind of want to make the dirt come in from multiple directions almost. So it kind of wraps around this little clearing in the cave. Already with the dirt floor, this is looking a little better, but this end of the cave is still looking plain compared to this. So part of this pass is also going to be putting in some more cobblestone and andesite. So there's a nice little vein of andesite. I'll add a little bit of cobblestone over here. Alright, so that's just a little bit more detail. It it's not a lot of work, but it makes it look a whole lot better down here than just the flat stone. So now that I'm all loaded up with materials for finer details, these are the ultra fine details if you will. I'm going to be using these partial blocks and just kind of placing them in. I want to make these slopes a little less blocky. You see, it looks a lot nicer when you start adding stuff like that in. These veins of cobblestone here look less like just chunks that you've placed in. More like kind of more natural places where the terrain's been dug out a little bit. And these sections of flat stone can be spruced up too with these lovely new variants of the slabs and stairs for both. So how we're able to do these andesite sections as well because they graciously gave us slabs and stairs for those. There is one more bit of detail that I need to add. I need to use some of this gravel. And what that's going to do is break up between the dirt and the stone. Places like this which or just a little section between a stone variant and uh, the dirt. Those could be gravel. Because that's kind of where the stone might be super broken up into very small pieces. Yeah, these just little bits of gravel off to the side. Add that last little bit of life that this cave needs to make it look like we just kind of found a cave and dug it out a little more for our own purposes which is i mean exactly what happened all right so now it's time to build another portal wow let's go to hell all right so i've got my materials in hand and i've got my spot where the portal will go make this a three by three portal obviously the minimum is a uh, two wide by three tall but you can make it bigger than that and that's what i want to do I'm just going to dig out the spots here and place them in. Alright, now that the obsidian's in, before I light the portal, I want to decorate the back of it. I don't want to have the boring flat stone behind it, so I have some polished andesite here that I'm going to place in. Uh, remove that one. And then now I am ready to light the portal. Alright, so I got my supplies together so I can go on through the portal. Let's see what we got here. We got a lot of cobblestone, a couple stacks of torches, flint and steel, an extra pickaxe, 
some arrows, a crafting table, and water bottles. So the cobblestone and torches are to find my way home, leave me some little breadcrumbs along the way. These water bottles are uh, something I picked up in a uh, when I was doing um, speed runs to get to the dragon. You would take a water bottle, you take the water bottles with you into the Nether. You can go ahead and brew a fire resistant potion and farm up some blaze rods, which would be nice. And then, as you can see, I crafted up a whole new set of armor. And so I think I am ready to go deeper. Alright, so the first thing going into the Nether, you shift and check out your terrain. This doesn't seem to be that bad of terrain. There's a giant hole right here in front of my nether portal, but this seems to be pretty closed off. No chance of uh, gas just sweeping in here and destroying my portal. Well, I can hear a gas. Put out some of these fires here. I'm going to come out here and just take a little peek. Take a peek over here. Make sure that gas isn't like right on top of me. I'm going to poke my head around a little bit and see what I think would be the easiest way to go. Because there's not a lot of easy options here. You know? But I'll take a look around and be right back. Alright, so after taking just a little peek around, this seems to be a pretty self-contained little uh, nether cave here little piece of a ravine sticking through it. So another ravine over here. I think my best bet is going to be to go down this way. As you see it kind of continues over here and there's this lava ocean over here. This cave kind of leads over to where that is. I think this is going to be my best bet. So what I'm going to do first before I drop down is I'm going to at the edge of this cliff put a cobblestone pillar with a torch pointing towards my nether portal and this will be the first of many that I create. The point of this is to really just stand out. You put a light on it so you can uh, so you make sure you can see it and this cobblestone is such a different texture from the netherrack and the quartz, the lava, everything else you're going to be able to see it. You're going to be able to notice it even from far away. So I have one up here to kind of show me that this is where I need to go. But if I just go ahead and drop on down here, I, uh, I can just pillar back up later. And then down here a little ways out, I'll put me another one of these. And that's pointing at the last one. And so this is just my little trail of breadcrumbs through the nether. And... Oh my, it looks like I've already found what I wanted to find though, so look at this. That nether fortress is so close, that's amazing. And I think we're going to go right on up into the nether fortress. And there is me getting the advancement. I'm not technically in the fortress yet, but I must have entered the bounding box. So I'm just going to build up some cobblestone over here, and I'll be able to see. There's a gas somewhere, but that'll be alright. This way I just know to go down here. And so I'm going to be very careful inside this nether fortress. But we're going to just start running around exploring it.
magma slimes are being evasive. I cannot find them anywhere. Alright, so I am running low on food, and these magma slimes are being very elusive. So I think. Ah! I think I'm gonna die by Wither Skeleton. Um, okay, so let's have a little lesson in getting your stuff back. Let's grab a few quick supplies here. I had some stuff I really wanted. Let's, uh, I got a pickaxe. Let's get... Alright, so actually right now I'm not in panic mode yet because my items aren't loaded. Once I get into the nether, I'm going to be in, you know, get over there real quick mode. And, you know, that's why I'm making all those sissy bars and stuff, because I'm not good at combat in this game. Something hits me, I freak out, and my fingers lose the keys, and it's just a huge mess. Ooh, I don't know if I can survive these drops without armor. I have armor. Why don't I have any armor points? There we go. Uh, still, it's a uh, drop. Okay. Uh, where was this fortress? Over here. See if I can find my stuff. Hopefully, neither of those skeletons put it on. Oh, and now I find a magma slime. Sure. Oh, I'm going to have to take care of this guy. Let's do this by climbing up a little bit. Nope. I'm going to die again. How about that? Alright, I'm trying to avoid this magma slime. Because, you know, I don't want any of it now. No, eat some bread. See, if I had a bow, I could break that big slime down into some more manageable pieces, but... I don't have a bow. Alright, now I'm just gonna run straight on in. There's still skeletons over there. I hope they didn't see me. Luckily, it looks like neither one of those wither skeletons were the kind that are able to pick up your gear. And it looks like this zombie pigman was not that type either. Alright, got that dude. Sissy bar up. Eat some food. Okay. Now there's this guy over here. I don't want any of what you are selling. You are only selling my death. Okay. Okay, okay. And I'm gonna see if my... Old buddy's still down here. Yep, there he is. There we go. And see, when old buddy splits down, he's a lot more manageable. Look at you. You're not going to jump six blocks and hit me for half my health. You'll jump two blocks and hit me for a heart. You won't drop me any magma slimes. Not that I could pick them up anyway. Oh, and the other one fell down into a lava lake. Perfect. Okay. You know, how many blaze rods did I get? Six? 
That's good enough for now. Let's make this staircase back up here that I was supposed to make earlier. Although I don't know when that earlier would have been. This. Boom, boom, boom. Alright, so I have my little staircase made. Comes down into this section. On this side, we have the other side of the staircase coming down, looping around on itself. Now I'm going to come back up and head back out into my cave. That's the wrong way. Alright, I'm back from the nether, and it was actually a pretty profitable trip. I designated this barrel for uh, my nether stuff. Let's say I got a few nether blocks, got my nether wart, I got some quartz, got some blaze rods. This quartz is especially useful right now because what I want to do next is get some food going. I have four pieces of steak left in my hand right now. I do still have all this hay over here, which can be converted into bread. But I uh, think there's a better use for this hay. In fact, I can convert this hay into steak. All it takes is a few extra steps. And those few extra steps are all related to a cow farm. So I think I'm going to put a cow farm right here in this wall. So I know what you're thinking. I'm going to put a cow farm in this wall? How's that going to work? Well, it'll work with some careful planning and some designing first in creative. Alright, and here we are in my creative test world. I can fly up and I can build cow farms. So here is the design that I've set her on. It's my own design based on an idea that pretty much is always just breeding animals in the game. You keep some breeder cows where they can't escape. But the babies can pop out. The babies flow down here, as you can see through uh, testing. There's already some cows in there. And if I hit this no block, they burn. If there are any babies in there, those babies would not burn. And as you can see, lots and lots of drops coming into this hopper. Let's show you how this works. So I'll just belly right on up here to these trap doors, put the wheat in my hand cows will start freaking out a little bit and I can start breeding them. And as I do, the babies are just going to start popping out of the sides like that. Alright, and so I think I got all of them. And now we can come down here and look. And there are lots and lots of babies in here. And so, we're going to sit here for a little while, wait for these to grow up, see how much we get from one breeding batch. Okay, so now that these cows have grown up, we can test the kill switch. I have a very simple circuit over here. This observer triggers this repeater, and this repeater is set to three ticks, which will double trigger this dispenser, which has a lava bucket. And it will turn these cows into steak. All I have to do is right click this note block. And a quick pulse of lava sets them all on fire. And as you can see, you got nearly half a stack of steak. And so the reason that doesn't kill any babies in here, I can come over here and hit that as many times as I want, even if they even if they've just been bred. Because if I trigger that now. They're just too short. Lava right above their head, they don't care. So now it's time to build this in the survival world. Okay, so I started by digging this wall out a little more flat. I know from my testing that the kill chamber, the hopper and the chest fort, is going to be three blocks below the bottom of the breeding chamber. So if I want the chest to go in the floor over here, or a barrel, or whatever I use, then it's one, two, three, and this is where the breeding chamber will go. And down here is where they'll fall into. 
And so up here, I need to dig out a five by five by five area. All right, so I got this hole dug out. I have uh, torches down here marking out where I'm gonna put the iron bars. And that is where my cows will stand. And I have two blocks underneath worth of space. So that I can have a water source over here and it's all flowing this way. And even if these cows, the babies jump a little bit, they're not gonna hit the iron bars. Next thing I wanna build is the collection chamber which will go right here and that's where the collection will be the double chest can just go right here hopper right here all right hopper right there and then that's where the cows will fall right down into after once they fall down into here i'm going to want to be able to see them so i know when i can hit the switch which i think will be right here and that way I can still open this chest, they can't get out, and I'll be able to see when they're grown up. So let's put in the kill switch next. Alright, and here as I eat my last piece of steak, I have everything that I need in my inventory. I'm going to break around the glass, and that way I can put the dispenser right here. So it'll face that way, we'll shoot here it click. There it goes. A repeater here set to three ticks. It doesn't have to be facing into the observer because the observer will detect it either way. I can't place redstone on cobblestone. I have polish anisite over here for my redstone. You should always try to use the same block for any redstone that you build. For me, that block is always polish anisite. And that way, if I ever see polish anisite, I know that that's probably a redstone build. All right, and so we will put the note block here. That double click tells us we are doing good. We can put the lava bucket inside the dispenser and give that a check. And we can see that that is good, except fatal error, the dispenser set up in the wrong spot. So I'm gonna just put the dispenser up here. Luckily, I don't really need to move the circuit. If I put a stone block right there, it will still work. Put the lava bucket in and we can just give that a quick test. I should have been a little more careful with my placement. Alright, and now that that's all filled in, this is a, I mean this is almost a working farm right here. What I'm going to do is put cobblestone here for now. And that way I can place down a water bucket. And I can drop that down right here. I don't need it flowing into there. If I hit that switch right now, I would lose my lava bucket. I'm going to take this wood and I'm going to turn it into trap doors. And I can place that right here. And this water flows right on up and the cows will get pushed right on in, just as we saw in the test world. So now I'm going to dig this out a little more and place in where I stand to belly on up to the cows and feed them some wheat. And so I'll put slabs along here. And then I would also need slabs along here for me to stand on. Three trap doors. If I get out of the block, go right here. And then if I get up here, I can belly right on up. That works. Perfect. And then there's enough space in here for the cows to fly out, do whatever they need to do. Okay, so I got some stairs in, and I uh, mixed in a little vein of andesite just to break up the texture. It was looking very plain without it. And so I can climb right on up here fairly easily and get right to where the cows are. I have the kill chamber in here and I'm going to dig straight up through it to drop cows just straight down into here. You can see I have it blocked off for the adult cows already. But I also want to block it off for the baby cows. It's because I don't want to drop 40 cows into this hole, you know? I want to drop 6 cows in this hole and breed them until I have 40. I'm going to use my F3 screen here, the debug screen. And down in the bottom left-hand corner, it tells me 
looking at block. Right now it says minus 50, 68, and minus 42. I wrote that down. And I'm going to go to the proper XZ coordinates on the top. And I know that's where I need to dig down to get, to drop the cows down into this hole. Okay, coming out here. Have a nice pillager patrol to deal with. Okay. Life in 114. I have no food in my inventory because I ate my last steak. That's wonderful. Get some chicken. Alright, and let's finish these guys off. They're probably here in my cave. Yep. Okay, that was an interesting surprise. I love coming outside at daytime to find mobs waiting on me. There's another one over here. Is he frozen? This is how I usually find them, frozen. That's how I'd like them to be always. You find the patrol, they're just sitting there, and then if you want to deal with them, you can attack them. If not, leave them be, and they'll despawn eventually. Are these guys aggroing on me now? Oh, now they are. Okay, so apparently if it's you go close enough. <laughs> I love their sound effects. Ow! These guys are not chill. Okay, screw Bad Omen. I'm looking for cows right now, so I'll find me a milk bucket. Minus 50, minus 42, right here. As you can see, I dug straight down into where I knew that I should be. And I'm going to just build a little bit of a structure around here that's going to help me lead the cows right on in this hole. And it's time to wrangle some cows. And there's a lot of cows out here. And before I forget, let's go ahead and drink this milk bucket. Get rid of that bad omen. But with these leads, I can just drag these cows along. And now with the cows back up here where my hole in the ground is, I will take them one by one. Belly you on up. Break your lead. They try to push back, but you can push them right on in. All in all, I dropped 12 cows into here and I only lost one of them, I'm pretty sure. I can come in and breed them on up. And what I need to build now is a system that can tell me when it's time to breed more cows. For that, I need to go back into the nether, I'm pretty sure. Yep, because I don't have any glowstone. So let's hop into the nether, get some glowstone real quick. And then come back and install a five minute timer. I'm back with some basic supplies and I'm ready to build this five minute timer. So the reason you want it to be a five minute timer is because that's how long it takes for animals to be ready to breed again. And there's actually a very simple way in Minecraft to create a five minute timer. It's going to start with a redstone lamp right here. We're going to put a wooden pressure plate on top of that lamp. I'm going to break, uh, I'm going to break a couple of those for some space. Put a dropper right there. Replace that where it goes. I need something to stock it with. Something that I don't care about. That I farm super easy, large quantities. Two and a half stacks is enough for quite a long time. Then I will block that off some more. And I will put the button right here. When I hit the button, the light will turn on. 
and an item that'll happen by an item falling on the pressure plate. And then, after five minutes, the item will despawn, the pressure plate will come back up, the light will turn off. When the light turns off, I can come up here and breed my cows. So I'll have all the wheat in there. If the light's off, I can grab it from the barrel right underneath, go breed up some more cows. And they will just fall down into here once I remove those blocks blocking it off. For right now, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to uh, hang out while I breed up these cows, pay attention to the lot, pay attention to the light. And I'll be back when we have quite a lot of cows in here. A lot more than this. I've spent some time uh, breeding up the cows, and there's definitely enough in here now. They're kind of bouncing around, so you can't tell how many there's in there, but they started to entity cram, so I can't really fit any more in. I'm just going to break these slabs here to start. These blocks on the sides. Then I gotta get the blocks on the back. Go right into the farm, break those, come back out, and then replace these blocks, and now this is completely open. I can breed these cows up and they'll fall through. We'll grab up some wheat, and so once I get up here, and these trap doors make it where I get close enough to be able to feed them, but still allowing a flat wall here that the baby cows can fall straight down into this water stream. I can get my weed out and get to breeding. And as you can see, there's tons and tons of baby cows down here. Perfect. I've been going through the cycle for a little bit now. I've been breeding them up. I've been killing off the adults. As you can see, I upgraded the system just a little bit. They were entity cramming quite a lot. And so I just gave them more space, so now 75 cows theoretically could fit in here. Although typically, due to their AI, they tend to cram into one side of this area, so... As you can see, I have a lot of steak. You see, here's from where they occasionally entity cram, and what I do is I just take these, and I drop them right over here. Since I've been doing the breeding of the cows, I've been getting XP from that, and I am up to 30 levels. So, to finish off this episode, I think I'm going to go check out this enchanting table and see what we've got. Alright, so I'm just going to test it out here with these stone tools, and if I find something good, I'll make a good tool out of it. So let's see. You could get fortune on a pickaxe, which would be pretty good. Sharpness 3 on a sword, protection leggings. I think I'm going to go for a fortune on a pickaxe because that'll help me get more coal, more lapis, more diamonds later. And I'm going to put that fortune on my diamond pickaxe. So let's put that in. I need three pieces of lapis. And it'll give me fortune 3 because diamond's a little better. So it gets a little bit better of an enchantment. And I can take this mining with me and use it to mine out the diamonds, the lapis, the coal, the redstone, and be able to get a lot more of that. And I think I'm going to end this episode right here. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun making this one too. I think it turned out a little better than the last one. You can uh, let me know what you think in the YouTube comment section below. Until next time... This has been Eric. Peace out.